Hello, in this lecture snippet I want to focus in on the basics of two different networking scopes, the Metropolitan Area Network, also called a MAN, and the Wide Area Network, also called a WAN. And they're grouped together basically because both of these types of networking scopes usually use similar technologies, either the same technologies or very similar. And the big difference between them is going to be the geographical location of our network itself. And so let's go ahead and begin by looking at the MANs. We, in the past two videos of this course, we've talked about local area networks, LANs, and how they're confined to a building. Well, we want to take this network and actually expand it to another office or another building that we may own and establish a network between these different offices or different locations. If we do this within a geographical area, such as within a city or within 30 miles, it's typically going to be called a metropolitan area network. Now in order for us to make this connection between our networks, typically we're going to have to rely on a third party and use the already established connections or lines that they have run to make our connections. And so that we typically will use this third party, either an internet service provider or a telecommunications provider, to be able to run our data through their lines and make it go to another building. Now we can run our own buildings and so typically in a college campus we may have our own lines that we've run from building to building and we'll have our MAN established there on a campus and we don't necessarily need a third party but for most cases we usually use a third party company to do this. Now I said wires. We can also look at wireless when it comes to metropolitan area networks as well and there's a lot of cities that have adopted WiMAX as a wireless technology. It's very similar to Wi-Fi it's just that it extends quite a bit longer distances uh, up to 20 to 30 miles and it can cover a whole city with a connection and so WiMAX would be a standard typically associated with metropolitan area networks where we can actually communicate with buildings using wireless. Let's go to WANs now. WANs are very similar to MANs it's just the, the big difference is instead of it being within a city we're looking at connecting offices that are either national or in different geographical areas maybe even international and so we're still going to be making these same connections we're going to be using a third party company most likely and we're going to be using different technologies to be able to make connections to our buildings so that we can share data between all of our offices. So let's look at some of the equipment that we may find within our company itself. So, so in the LANs we talked about having the switch and you can see that you've got a switch and different computers plugged into a switch. The switch is plugged into a router and the router allows us to have different networks be able to communicate with each other. And now the router will typically plug into a device either a modem or a CSU, DSU is a typical device for our WAN connections and this device allows us to take the technology that we're using from our third party company and be able to communicate and send data over it. You can see the demarcation point. Now this is where the wires come into the building itself and this is the location where the third party company has run their wires in and now I need to make a connection to them. And so these are what you typically find inside of your building as it relates to WANs. So your router will usually connect to a CSU or DSU. Oftentimes it's a serial connection and then you'll see the CSU DSU will connect into what's called the demarcation point which is where the wires come into your building and it's, it's the junction that they've created for you in order to tie into their network itself. And so this is what you would typically find as far as equipment and expanding basically beyond the router itself. And let's go ahead and look at what's on the outside of our building. Now on the outside of our building between our office and the internet service provider or the telecommunications company that connection is often called the local loop or the last mile that refers to the line that they have provided for you from their company to your building and again that could also be wireless because of the WiMAX capabilities and so typically it's going to be wired and typically today it's going to be fiber optic wires but it's going to be the connection between those two different locations your third party company and your office itself so that's what the last mile or local loop refers to now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these different options for connections we do have a few options. We've got the circuit switch connection, we've got a dedicated lease line connection, and we're going to look at also the packet switch connections. The circuit switch connections are not as common today for wide area networks, but, but still can be used. As you can see, they provide a dedicated connection between a sender and receiver. The thing about this is, is they do this whenever it's needed. It's not an always on type of scenario. Basically, it's like your telephone where you pick up a phone and call somebody and then a connection is established. This is a similar technology for that. There are two different options that I have listed here. One is the plain old telephone service which is also known as POTS and again it's very slow. You're using a modem you're using up to 56 kilobits per second and it's analog not really commonly used today. Another option that people use is this integrated services digital network also called an ISDN and so you'll use an 
a device called a terminal adapter. You are limited to about 128 kilobits per second. The difference between this and the POTS is the fact that it's digital, and so you are able to run a little bit higher speeds using this. Companies today may use this ISDN connection, but usually it's only used for a backup connection in the event that everything else fails. We usually can use the telephone company's line and make this connection for a backup option, but rarely anything else today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dedicated lease lines. Now a dedicated lease line connection has a line run to your building and it is your line that you are leasing and you have a dedicated connection between that line and whatever building it is that you want to connect it to. And so this is going to be the most expensive method that we have. You can see it says a point-to-point -point dedicated connection. Some of the options that we have here include the T1 and the T3. Now the T1 is going to run at 1.5 megabits per second and you can see that it uses a CSU or a DSU to make that connection to our wire area network. We also have the T3 which is going to run about 30 times faster. It's going to run at 44 megabits per second. Both of these options are commonly used today. We have another option using fiber optic networks. We can use the SONET or synchronous optical network. It's called that in the United States or in Canada, so for North America. Other parts of the world they can refer to it as the synchronous digital hierarchy. And this type of network actually, or these type of dedicated lines will allow us to carry various different types of technologies. We can actually carry our T1 connection and a T3 connection through this. You'll see ATM listed there. That's going to be a packet switch technology that we'll talk about in just a moment. But we can actually carry different types of technologies over this fiber optic network that they have. And there actually are different levels for this. You can see the OC3, OC12, 48, 192, and 768. Those refer to different speeds or different connection types. Now for wide area networks and for most consumers or most businesses, we're going to look at a max of usually the OC3, which is going to be very fast. You can see that it runs up to 155 megabits per second. So, so this is a quite a bit faster than our T3 lines as an option. And it is very versatile because it will allow us to carry lots of different technologies over this connection itself. So let's go ahead and look at another option. Instead of using a dedicated line, we can also use a packet switched connection. Now the packet switch connection is going to work differently than your dedicated lease lines in that it's going to take your data and package it up into a frame and send it through a switched base network. And so there really is no dedicated connection. We're going to send it into a network similar to what we'd find in a local area network where we have switches that will move data back and forth until it reaches its destination. Nation. And so with the packet switch connection, we don't necessarily have to have a dedicated line from building to building through your third party company. We can send it into their network, it'll move around through their network and then reach its destination. And so the couple of different options that we have for this include the X25 option, which is not really popular or used in the United States or in Europe, but it will allow you to run WAN connections over your phone lines. And you can see that for this technology, you can actually use a network interface card that would plug in and allow you to connect to this network. You're looking at speeds up to 64 kilobits per second, so it's not a very fast option for us. Now, Frame Relay is another option that we have, and today it's typically run over fiber optic networks. You would use a CSU or a DSU to connect into this, and you can see the speeds will go from 64 kilobits per second all the way up to 44 megabits per second, and this is a viable option today. Now, a common choice for wide area networks using packet switch technology is going to include the ATM option, which usually runs over your SONET or your fiber optic network that you have, or it can run over your T1 or T3 options as well. And the data, instead of it being sent into variable sizes of frames, it actually has a, a fixed cell that's 53 bytes long to send your data through its network. And this is a very common option today for WAN connections. We also have the MPLS, or the Multi-Protocol Label Switching option, which instead of it just working with frames or cells, this option can work with the ATM or Frame Relay, and it can work over the SONET or fiber optic network that we have, and takes it one step further by also being able to work with your IP data or your IP addresses and develop a method of transferring data across a wide area network. And so these are some of the technologies that we have when it comes to the metropolitan area network and the wide area network scope.